thousand years we've always had a problem if we're strangers and we want to engage in consensual exchange mm -hmm. we if we're strangers we can't trust each other right. so I'm gonna give you this camel you're gonna give me a gold coin but I don't know if you debase the gold or not so there's a business model the guy who has monopoly on violence in the area mints gold puts his face on it and says if you debase that I kill you so that's a, a way to monetize his monopoly on violence it's just a business model but in doing so, we, he creates something that we, can, we don't need to trust each other. We each just trust it. Mm -hmm. Similarly with land titling. Similarly with Wall Street. Similarly with Airbnb. You and I can't trust each other as strangers, so we can't engage in consen consen consensual exchange mm -hmm. without some third-party institution that injects trust. Mm -hmm. And for 6,000 years, you can view the evolution of social, of our institutions as different attempts to solve that problem of trust. And, I, well, I was on the, I was in a stealth company in Silicon Valley once, about four years ago, looking on a wall. They had the 160 industries they thought could be disrupted. And they were grouped into ones that we call corporations and ones that we call government. Mm -hmm. But there are 160 different functions from notary public to tax collection to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It can all be made through, done through blockchain. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can be made so you can't cheat it. So what's interesting, you know, we're living in the sharing economy now, and, uh, and economists that we've actually interviewed for this series talk about the sharing economy in the future because of this sharing economy and how it affects GDP, et cetera, that, that you, know, you can have actually people more fulfilled. GDP doesn't necessarily go up because if they share an Uber ride, right, uh, to, you know, th that doesn't help GDP, but two people are fulfilled in what it is they're trying to get done, or because Uber exists, maybe they're not buying a car, but they're still getting their fulfillment you're seeing that blockchain might actually disrupt that whole sharing aspect because there's still a broker of putting together these two people, whereas now the blockchain can do it without anybody in the middle, a government or an individual. The blockchain, eventually that'll be done by some smart coin. And it's using reputation and effect and such to govern, to police proper behavior. And uh, yeah, the functions of Airbnb and Uber, it's t as leading edge as they are, ultimately they can be disrupted by blockchain. Wow. So uh, it's disruption after disruption in this yeah. world, isn't it? My target, my one target is on central banking and yeah. one is on, ah, I don't want to say target, one product that we've developed that is for, is for central banking, one is for land titling, one is for capital markets like Wall Street. Mm -hmm. So a version of Wall, of Wall Street that can't be cheated that or all kinds of mischief that currently goes on on Wall Street can't occur in a blockchain Wall Street. So it's we're really applying this stuff to the leading edge. Wow, so uh, let's talk about that because uh, as we look at poverty and lifting people out of poverty, uh, that seems to be a focus in your agenda that, that your efforts in the blockchain are gonna have that impact on the world. So can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, well, a guy named Brock Pierce says a billionaire should be not a person who's made a billion dollars, but a person who's helped a billion people. That's four or five years ago when I got into it. I started thinking, uh, what are the fun? I, so there's this new age riding to mankind, riding on a blockchain to mankind. What are the fundamental processes of that new age? And I want to own a piece of them and help nurture them to life. And it's really more important nurturing them to life. I don't, so to me, those fundamental processes are the formation of capital, mm -hmm. then the formation of money, then capital markets, commerce, and voting, because you hope that the new age is still an age of consent of the governed. So mm -hmm. capital, that comes from, that starts with land governance. So blockchain meets land governance, money, Currently, the world lives on fiat money that central banks issue. So blockchain meets central banking. Then blockchain meets Wall Street. Mm -hmm. These are the different, and then blockchain meets supply chains and blockchain meets voting. We have investments or have either started the leading edge businesses in some of those fields, or we have investments like where we own a third or so of the company, of the leading company in that field. And it was all 
uh, we've actually used $175 million uh, into, we've moved into the blockchain ecosystem so far and are managing, just trying to nurture these companies to life. And you're doing this through a subsidiary of, of Overstock? Right. So what's your structure like on that? So Overstock owns it and then, or, you know, is this kind of a, a private equity fund or how are you viewing it? It's kind of a, well, first Overstock owns it. Mm -hmm. And then, so within Overstock, there's a business unit called, a corporation called Medici, mm -hmm. Medici Ventures, run by a friend of mine, Jonathan Johnson, a very sharp business guy. Mm -hmm. So that's, think of it like a venture capitalist slash incubator but even it does something I've never seen anyone else do. Because it is part of a bigger 2,000 person company, it means that as we invest in these small companies, we can help them in ways that a typical venture capitalist couldn't. We can bring in, when they need a database engineer, we can bring in three PhDs in database engineering to help them out and such. So we have a lot of resources that we help nurture these companies, these startups with. So sometimes these companies, have you ever seen Silicon Valley? The show, yes. Yeah. yeah, and it really is like some kids in a house with a, you know, writing code with a box of weed, and they have some idea, but they're three years before anyone else in the world had that idea. Right. And so you, bringing a little bit of corporate, not too much, but a little bit of corporate structure to them is sometimes welcome. So it seems to be a consistent theme with you that uh, you're doing things like other people don't do it. You know, as you're talking about even how this fund operates, well, it operates differently than how other people might do this, but this is how, how we approach it. What is it that you think is about your disposition that is consistent, like that that's the way you approach life? Well, I am curious and I'm always, I'm, I suppose tinkering is what I'm doing. I'm trying different institutional designs to achieve something and, it's, uh, and I get to tinker and, and see what, it's kind of like being a constitutionalist. I'm always drafting the constitution for things and then setting them in motion, seeing how they work out and then tinkering with a couple things. I don't have time to be the, the pilot of the individual craft like I used to, which is distressing. There's too many of them. We have 19 of them. So right. I'm kind of the, I'm in the background, but helping these things come to life. From an entrepreneurial standpoint, if you were to give uh, advice or wisdom around this, a lot of times, you know, there's the, you know, the Randy and rugged individualist, you know, that carries the weight of the world on, on his back, Atlas, basically. And then there's the idea of co-creation or collaboration. Um, do you see this, this new blockchain world and economy as it emerges being more of a collaborative type of a environment? I do, starting with the open source nature of it itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really is, it has, blockchain has the old cypherpunk, uh, you ought to look up the cypherpunk manifesto if you don't know it, and the, and the, the novel of the cypherpunk uh, snow crash. Mm -hmm. And there's a real cypherpunk ethic to blockchain. It's going to create a world where we can all like cooperate and <laughs> I get all choked for Clem thinking about it, but a world where uh, I'm, what's so interesting is that by people taking part, they are creating the value itself that they can have a, they can have a share in. But by taking part in the ecosystem of a coin, they can be helping create value in that coin. Uh, however, people what is, do, it about, what is it about that that chokes you up? What is it that, that like emotionally stirs you there? Well, because so much of life, really, what separates us from, you know, the, the animal world is that we do get to cooperate. Everything beyond bare minimum hunter-gather occurs because we have found ways to cooperate. Mm -hmm. And the more we can cooperate and the less rely on predation, the better for everybody. Unfortunately, we've always, in order to sort of oversee the terms of cooperation and police the terms of cooperation and so forth, you know, you could imagine some primitive hunter-gatherers starting to cooperate, and then eventually somebody's going to start saying, well, we need to elect bosses and police. And that, you know, that's why the story, I'm so excited about the story of Holland. I love Holland because it was a bunch of people who moved out to a swamp, and they said, okay, we're going to cooperate. We have to cooperate. It's the nature of a dike that all the different people, you know, if only one guy doesn't do his piece, the, the, the dike doesn't, doesn't do its job. Uh, so how are, we gonna sh how are we gonna split the benefits and burdens of social cooperation? And what they came up with was a very uh, a minimalist system where you, yes, we do need a mayor, 
but that mayor isn't, or, or a governor of some kind, that isn't some overarching presence in the sky. It's just a first among equals. It's just another citizen that we hire to do that job, like you'd hire a plumber to do a job. And that's what government, that's the correct understanding of government. No disrespect intended to government or the people who work there, but the proper understanding is that it's, there's a bunch of things we can't do individually, so we need to create offices where they can coordinate so then we can do things or just those things can be done and but sometimes those governments have had a history of getting of forgetting themselves and figuring and forgetting who they were that they work for us and it's pretty hard to design a constitution to keep that from happening blockchain comes along and it's going to really let us uh remind remind the world of the right structure i mean all kinds of things are going to shift to blockchain <laughs>